This is the build of the Revision 6 Classic High Voltage Circuit. Following the parts list through, we've got C5 and C6, which are two 22 picofarad capacitors, a 16 megahertz crystal, Q2, two 100 nanofarad capacitors, C7 and C8, D2, which is a UF4007, a socket to put the controller in, a 28 pin socket, a capacitor 2.2 microfarad 400 volts C1, a, an inductor 100 microfarads L1, a resistor R7 which is 3K, an IRF840 MOSFET um, which is wrapped in foil because it's slightly static sensitive, a 390K resistor, a 4.7K resistor, a 10K resistor, R18 and the controller itself. So following the, uh, the instructions through, we're going to place them more or less uh, in the order that, that they arrive. So we're going to put in C5 and C6 into their slots here. You notice I'm bending the leads out each time just to make it a, a little bit easier to, to deal with. Um, I'm going to place pretty much all of the components. C7, which is the 100 nanofarad. C8, which is a decoupling capacitor. On the other side of the controller. And let's put those in first and see how far we can get. So I'm using some thin solder for this. So I'm going to solder them all in more or less in one go. I'm going to solder one lead at a time. And then we can make sure the components are oriented properly. Um, and then we can solder the other leads. Okay, let's see. They all seem quite good. Maybe I just put those two capacitors a bit closer, the 22 picofarad capacitors. And we should try and keep the leads as short as we can on these guys. So that looks good. Let's uh, solder up the other sides. And to do this, because they're now in uh, a uh, secure position, I can straighten the leads out again. And it makes the soldering of the the other side a bit easier. Solder that one there in the middle. Okay, that looks that looks quite good. I'm just reflashing a couple of those connections. My iron was a bit cool. That looks better. Okay, so we can trim all these guys off. And remember, my golden rule is when you trim, get the little offcuts out of the way. It'll come back and it will bite you if you don't. It only takes a second to do, but once you've done it, you've done it. Okay, let's put the, the crystal in. And you notice I just splay the leads very slightly to keep it in the right position. One. I like a little bit of offset, but not much on the crystal. Good. Then we get to the resistor, sorry, the 
diode D2, which is a UF4007. And this goes in this position here. And again, the white stripe goes onto the square pad. And I generally prefer to make the white stripe point upwards. You see, that's a little bit wonky there, but we'll come back and we'll adjust that in a second. So I'm going to solder one lead. No, that's standing. That's standing well. So we can solder in the other side. That looks good. Soldering in the socket um, is a little bit tricky. So first of all, eh, sometimes the pins get a bit damaged in transit. So you have to take maybe a second just to straighten them up a bit. Um, I prefer to hold things a bit steady while I'm doing this with just a little bit of tape. And then I'm going to tack a couple of the pins, one on each side. So one here, and one here. Then we can remove the tape. And it looks good, but we'll just push the socket in while I reflow those joints. Okay, that's all good. And now we can just go through and solder the rest of the joints, just at the leads here. Once you get a rhythm going and you get into the zone, it doesn't take long at all. Quite a lot of pins to solder, but it's not hard. Three to go, two to go, last one. Okay, that looks pretty good. One thing to notice I put in, I should have said this before, but I actually put in the socket with a notch on it, matching the notch on the board. And that then will match the notch on the controller. So you see there's a notch, notch, notch. Okay. Let's put in the capacitor and again, white stripe goes to white stripe on the board. Now this board is designed to take all sorts of capacitors um, and it doesn't really matter which size you have, um, but we, in some configurations, the uh, the capacitor can end up skewed a little bit, but the major point is negative to the negative side, positive to the positive side. And you may notice I just tightened up a little bit the, the capacitor to the board there. Okay, that's the capacitor in. Let's put in next the inductor L1. So you can see this guy goes in here like this and we want to get it fairly flush to the board. So let me pop this in. So next we have to put in the 3k resistor R7 which is basically the pull down on the MOSFET. So this helps to keep the MOSFET turned off while we're not using it. 
again, I go through the process. I'm going to solder one lead, and in fact, it stood up straight already. That's good. And then we can solder the other lead. Trim up. Now we can put in the MOSFET. And again, we're going to put the metal tab to the side with the white line on it. This isn't so hard to do as the other one. But what I do like to do is I do like to get them the, light, the same height. And the way I do this is just by resting the board down on the, um, on the LN2596 and then automatically, more or less, this guy ends up nearly at the right level. I'm just going to adjust it a bit. Okay. We don't want them to touch and we want them to be the same, the same height just for aesthetics. It doesn't matter very much for the actual uh, working of the board, but it just makes it much nicer looking if we get the two components at the same height. Okay. There we go, I like that. So we trim, trim up again. That looks good. Now the next two components, it's really important to get them the right way around. So the 4K7 resistor, and that's yellow, purple, black, brown. It's a 1% um, resistor. That goes in the R10 position. R10 is here. If you get these R10 and R9 the wrong way around, you're going to destroy your controller. So be extra super careful while you're putting these guys in. So R10 goes in like this on this side. And R9, 390K resistor. So orange, white, black, orange, brown. That goes in facing the other way around. Let's give that a solder on one of the pads. Just make sure that looks good. That looks great. to the other side. That's very good. Trim up. All right, that looks nice. We're down to the last little bit here. So R18, the 10K resistor. This is the pull up on the reset line. of the controller. That's the main part of the soldering done. Let's just take a quick look at some of the voltages and make sure we haven't got any bits laying around on the desk. So let's turn on our power supply. Before we put the controller in, I want to again test the, um, the voltages that we get at the test points. So we have a ground and a VCC, so 4.983, that's very good. And then I want to test at, let me check the schematic a second. I want to test the voltage at the controller. Right. 
And that is at pin seven and pin 20. So again, testing to ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 4.983, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 4.5983. Okay, that's good. Let's take this back out. And this is the bit where we have to be in a quiet place. We want to listen for no buzzing, no straining sound. We want to check that nothing's getting too hot. So let's try. Okay, this looks good. And let's test between ground and HV. And we're getting 190 point, 190 volts. Okay, we're not at load at the moment. So I think that's fine. That's the build of the, okay, and the voltage is dropping. Very good. That's the build of the high voltage circuit.